wanted to win. We were in it to win it. We wanted to be on top. We, at first, didn't think about all the financial parts of marketing. We just, our mindset was just to stay on top and to always be the best. We wanted to learn how marketing and advertising works. In marketing, uh, we developed the overall understanding of marketing. We also created ads specifically for each brand. And, you know, we learned through trial and error which ones they liked, which ones they didn't like. We also want to learn the overall business plan. And we learned how to target our segments correctly. So with our company, Simple Tech, we started with Noob, then moved on to Minicon. MyCom Inc., Nova, Infinite Tech, Globe Tech 4. Okay, so as mentioned, one of our goals was to win. So basically, selling top competing markets. Yes, we took that route. Do I recommend it? Well, the word competitive says it all. We didn't realize a lot of teams were going into the same market, so that was frustrating. We started off with one sales office in North America, Toronto, Canada. Home of the moose, people syrup, and poutine. We came up with two computers, Del Novo and Luxolo. Fun fact, Luxolo stands for luxury. Hello. Anyways, it was marketed for a workforce, while Del Novo was tailored for cuss cutters. That clearly didn't work when we barely sold any computers for Del Novo. We had a total of five salespeople, one for support, two for cost cutter, and two for workforce. Our sales force had a salary of $50,000, 2 weeks vacation, 12% pension, and full health coverage, aka salespeople were happy. Our manufacturing facility was set up in Mexico City. Our production employees had a salary of $18,000 two weeks of vacation, 9% pension, and minimum health coverage, aka they were not happy. Forgot to mention, but our fixed capacity was set up to 25 units per day. Back to our computers, Belnova was priced at $2,000 with the rebate of 100 and had a point of purchase display. This was liked by cut cutter segment. Luxolo was priced at $3,100 with a rebate of $100, also had point of purchase display, and was light by the workhorse segment. And finally, both computers had two ads, in order to understand what our customers really wanted. So quarter five. This was the quarter we had to pick up our slack. <laughs> the VC fair happened and we learned other team's thoughts and what they were planning on doing. At this time we had 12 salespeople, six for Los Angeles and six for Toronto. So that would be one support, two cross cutter, two in workhorse and one in traveler. Quarter six, we were now in the entire North American region. Woo! Okay, so what changed? We focused on workhorse and cuss cutters still, as well as travelers. We created a new brand named Simpleton, and we vamped our Del Novo into Del Novo G2. By adding new components, we saw our competitors added. Oh yeah, we had to switch our brands around. Remember that fun fact? Yeah, well, Del Novo did well with Workhorse after we modified it, and Luxolo did well with uh, cost cutters. And now, the decision of R&D. It was something we felt we needed to invest in. And when I say invested, I mean invested. We went all out. Like, we paid $3.5 million on the Pro with ease of use operating system and 930k on high speed network why simple tech why you waste so much money was it why maybe but jesus 4.4 million i could buy a house and a car and still have money left over for a jet 
literally complaining about not having cash and using almost all the next quarter. It was a very risky move, but we did great afterwards. Oh yeah, forgot to mention, but during the VC fair, we were able to uh, buy shares from Minicom and Nube bought shares from us. Quarter 10, Simpleton dominated the market. We scored second highest in demand, less than 1,000 behind Minicom. We did particularly well in the workhorse, traveler, and cost cutter market segments. Our sales boomed to over 31 million with Del Novo G5 and Simpleton 3 being our top selling brands, though Luxo C3 and Zion X were still quite successful. We attribute this success to our highly proficient salespeople and industry workers. Their compensation packages were dramatically improved since Q5 in an attempt to increase their productivity, and we are happy to say they, we succeeded in this regard. Due to their success, we were able to launch 11 sales offices across all regions except MEA, hiring a total of 77 salespeople. I think sales was a weird love child between being serious and, ooh, spending and expanding. So yeah, we first opened a sales office in Toronto, then LA, Chicago, and Mexico City. After we went to Latin America, Sao Paulo, which may not have been the smartest move since it wasn't competitive and customers wanted lower prices. Then we went to Europe, uh, London, Paris, Moscow, and finally Asia. So Tokyo, Shanghai, and Sydney. We never opened a web center since we saw it wasn't that successful for teams and it was expensive. Using the channel profitability, we were able to see what brands did the best and which not so much. We either had to change the price or add components in order to increase demand and sell revenue. In quarter 9, there was an option to do Salesforce promotions in which we saw other teams doing it and we just said, hey, let's try it out. And unfortunately, that didn't really work in our favor because we didn't know how that worked out. In manufacturing, we learned that our very first big move was our production facility. We started by opening 25 units per day and ended with 250 units per day. We started to learn about stockouts and we had our first encounter in quarter four. Since the beginning of the simulation, we wanted to create the most reliable product out on the market with little to none defects. We started this journey in fourth place at a 66 level and ended with an overall reliability score of 86 at quarter 10. But we did have a small mistake at quarter 11 that put us to second overall because of the variance study error. We wanted to make sure we were putting money to our quality costs and inspections, and from there we could see what was affecting our defect issues. But what we did manage was by the end of the simulation, we got all our critical components down to zero, except for the hard drive component, which had 7.66 defect issues. We exchanged our operating system for the fail-proof ultra-cap hard drive by the company Nubay, but unfortunately this did not affect our defect issue. But overall, we did set out our goal on being the most reliable product we could to the marketplace. Woohoo! Finance and accounting! When we first started, we knew we had to spend most of our earnings from the common stocks, which included the $1 million from the 10,000 shares at $100 per share per quarter to get our computers manufactured and sold. During the Venture Capital Fair, we received over $5 million in common stock, which was the last quarter that we received any common stocks. I wanted to talk about the four major sources of how our money changed during the quarters. The four sources are revenue, production, research and development, and net operating cash flows. For quarter three, it was the first quarter that we received revenue of 508k. Our cost of production was 529k. Our research and development was 60k, and our net operating cash flows was negative 894k. For quarter five, our revenues were 2.9 million. Our production costs were 1.5 million. Our research and development was four and a half million, which we paid with the venture capital fair common stocks. And our net operating cash flows was negative 4.5 million. 
quarter seven, our revenues were 13 million, production costs 6.5 million, research and development 1.8 million, net operating cash flows 1.9 million, which was the first quarter that we received a positive amount. Woohoo! Quarter nine seemed to be our best quarter thus far, with 31 million in revenues. 14 million in production costs, 580k in research and development, and 8.5 million in net operating cash flows. As for quarter 10, it was a bit surprising that we went down with the numbers at 28 million for revenue, 15 million for production costs, 460k for research and development, and 1.8 million in net operating cash flows. According to the cumulative scorecard, we came out in first for financial risk. We have incurred zero debt throughout the whole simulation. We also managed to be first in marketing effectiveness. We were second in total performance, HR management, manufacturing productivity, wealth, market performance, and financial performance. We were fourth in asset management and unfortunately sixth in investment in future. Okay, so employee productivity. We definitely learned that paying people more money is linked to more productivity or basically more sales. Big surprise there. Employees not only looked for salary but also pension, health benefits, and most importantly, weeks of vacation. We basically looked at what our competitors were paying their employees in regions and saw how much of a difference in productivity there was compared to us. It was doing 98% while we were in 80% productivity, we had to either change uh, the pension percentage, increase salary, uh, increase weeks off of work uh, in order to increase productivity.